day to spread the word about teamwork. So, want more? You know, back in August, we kicked this off with Heather. She um, <coughs> kicked off this initiative on teamwork. Teamwork is very important to what we do uh, here. Um, none of these projects get done without the collective us. It's not just one person. So then on November 7th for International Project Management Day, we brought Heather back in to um, spend some more intensively working with the PMs basically on their role in building the team and what teamwork means for them and how to make it successful. So why is Heather back here today? Well, she's going to do an hour-long session on yoga. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. So Heather's uh, here today to give you some insight on what she told the project managers and to help you understand what your role is in making a successful team. And with that, I want to turn it over to Heather Hanson O'Neill. going to work today. I'll try to stay a little bit away from the speaker. How are we doing? Good. Yeah? Okay, I can tell that you guys are really into measurement, so this is going to be my measurement tool today. On a scale of one to five, with one being I'm about to fall asleep, and five being I'm totally stoked and energized and I can't wait for you to start, I want you to decide where you are and raise your hand and hold up the number, please. Come on, this is my measurement tool. Don't mess with my measurement tool. Okay? Good? Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask you again at the end, and I'm hoping to get the ones to threes, the twos to fours, and the threes to fives. Or maybe everybody to five, because I'm really, really excited to be here today. I am not going to talk under there. Okay, for those of you who know me, you know I'm a little bit high energy. So uh, I'll, I'll try not to scare away some of the high C's, and you'll understand what I mean when we get to the end, when we do a little bit of something on disc. But let me tell you what we're going to cover in the next hour. We're going to talk a little bit about what I covered on November 7th with the PMs. We're going to talk, we're doing a mini self-assessment tool. We're going to talk about some concepts, some general concepts of what you can do uh, from the inside out of teamwork. And I might ask you to do one or two minor activities. No yoga, I promise, I swear. Are we good? We are we are good. good. Yes, I love it. Thank you so much. Okay, so those of you who have seen me before, you know that I'm a little bit of an adventure junkie, and I always bring in one story from one of my adventures where I learned a lesson that's applicable to that situation. Some of you have probably heard my story on the trapeze. Some of you have heard the race car story, maybe jumping out of an airplane story. Today, we're going to be talking about rock climbing. Now, where's Rich? Rich had a story, not a story, he had a, a photo up here that he had up for like two seconds. Who saw it? It was rock climbing. Did anyone catch it? Yes? Okay, thank you. Cool. All right, that's me. I was 150 feet in the air, clinging to the side of a mountain. I was exhausted. My arms were shaking. I was tired. I was hungry. I was crabby. I had a belayer below me screaming, you, got, you can do this, you got this, keep going. I have the guide above me saying, I got you, you can do this. And I scream up, no I can't, I don't have a handhold. The next handhold is about six inches past where I could possibly have reached. And he kept saying, I got you, you can do this. And now I'm screaming up a few other things that I'm not allowed to say here. But finally, I realize that I have to start listening to him. I say, okay, what do I do? And he screams, jump. Did I mention that I was 150 feet in the air? More swearing. So finally, I'm like, okay, I've got to do it. I've got to go for it. And I jump. And I catch the next handhold for about three seconds. My fingers slip, and I come crashing into the mountain once, twice, three times until the ropes pulled up, the guide had saved my life. 
but I'm still 148 feet up in the air, a little bit to the right. Now not only am I tired and hungry and crabby, but I'm a little bit bruised and bloody and I'm even angrier. But I realized that I had fallen into a better place. Here, the handholds were closer together and I was able to make it to the top of the mountain. Why am I telling you that story? I'm telling you for two reasons. Because when you fall, which you will, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody encounters challenges. Everybody has problems and issues that arise. And when you fall, sometimes you end up in a better place. So look around for the lesson. Look around, because it's always there, and we don't have to wait 10 years to figure out what it was. The second reason why I tell you this story is it's incredibly important to surround yourself with people who say, I got you. You can do this. Surround yourself with empowering people, with team members. Bring them up. Lift them up. And you'll all be able to travel the road a little bit better or climb the mountain a little bit faster. I just want to make sure you're awake. Now, I want to begin with asking you, I know I said I was going to ask you to do a few things, this one's easy, I want you to tell me what qualities make for a successful team as a whole. You can call out. Thank you. What else? Good. A um, little louder, if you can. Diversity. Good. Nice. One more? Trust. Ooh, in stereo, I like it. That's great. Okay, I'm sure there are a lot more. But I also want you to think about what qualities of specific team members are important to have on the team. Confidence, yep. Open-minded. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that one. Open-minded. Good. Knowledgeable. Knowledgeable. Responsible. Mm. Did somebody peek at my slides? No. <laughs> okay, what else? Shows up at meetings. Ah, shows up. completely 
percent appreciated for how you contribute at home or at work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there you go, good. See, this is the thing. Most people feel underappreciated. And this is a very, very easy way for you to build rapport with people. So often, we focus on the things that are going wrong, the things that people, the mistakes that people make or the issues, the challenges that arise. And what happens there? That's what, what happens more often because what we focus on expands. But more often than those challenges are the things that are going right. Yeah, somebody made a mistake, but you're discounting the 20 other things that they did really, really well. So when we shift our focus to from what's going wrong to what's going right, and you start to show a little appreciation and actually seek it out, look every day for something that people are doing right, the whole dynamic on the team is going to change. Connect with respect. That little dude is my 12-year-old son, Jake, who was two in that picture. This boy, um, very, very bright, a lot of fun and incredibly challenging. I'll say that um, if I let him live long enough, he's going to make a real difference in the world. He's one of these kids that's always questioning, always challenging, and fucking authority at every, every turn. And I, I have a newfound appreciation or respect for my mother's heather-induced gray hair because every single attribute that my son has that makes me craziest came from me. Yeah. So I have a much better relationship with my mother now that my son came along. But when he's at school, those attributes of challenge, incessant questioning, calling out because he's just so excited about his answer even though no one else ever gets a turn, teachers don't like that. Yeah, they don't like that. So he, I get calls that he's in the principal's office quite often, but occasionally there's that teacher that person that sees past that, that sees inside of the goodness and all of the amazing qualities. And it could be a teacher at a school for him. It could be a mentor in an organization for you. You could be the person that sees past that inside to the unique gifts of the person that you're connecting with. My son's sixth grade teacher he really resonated with him. He saw that. He was able to cultivate the gifts that he had. And a boy who hated doing homework, hated doing the extra, going the extra mile, only missed homework one day that year and said to me, I don't want to tell Mr. Salvador that I didn't do my homework because I don't want to disappoint him. You see, the thing with respect, we all want respect. But the fastest, best way to get respect is to give it is to look for those gems, to look for, for that inner quality from someone and show them appreciation and see what happens. It comes right back around to you. Connect with responsibility. <laughs> Unfortunately, in today's world, I had to throw a little levity in here. Come on. <laughs>
is the basis for authenticity and reality. It's what keeps you sane in this world. Don't let go of that. So take responsibility. Anytime something's going on, yeah, maybe somebody else dropped the ball, but what could you have done differently, or what can you do to take responsibility for your part in it? Connect without judgment. One last story. This is the last one with the connection. I recently, about three weeks ago, did a training for a large insurance company here in Connecticut, and afterward, one of the project managers came up and said to me, oh, got it. I didn't realize it, but I think I was doing a little judging. He said, one of the guys on my new team is driving me nuts. He's negative, he's nasty, he's, and I don't remember him ever being like this before, but now he's just, he's not taking responsibility, he's just horrible to have around, and I, I want to kill him. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, are we getting to the part where you learned the lesson yet? And he said, I've been judging, and I think there's something going on for him at home, and I realize that maybe I should take a mentor role and just say, how can I help you? Now, last week, I got an email from him saying, wow, everything changed, just the sheer fact that I asked. Now, we don't, we're not, as, as project managers, we're not therapists, we're not there to be your best buddy all the time, but taking the initiative to care, it makes all a world of difference. He said, just asking turned everything around. Connect without judgment. You never know what's going on in someone else's world. <coughs> Has this ever happened? Are you feeling a little low energy during the day? Um, I don't know if you noticed. I happen to have a little bit of energy. I actually wake up this way, and I last this way pretty much until I go to bed at night. And there are certain things that I do to make that happen. And I wanted to share it with you. I have a little acronym for it. It's PMC. And I know you guys do a lot with acronyms. So you might see PM and be like, oh, boy, this is project management committee, contract. What, where, where is she going with this? No. Purpose, movement, connection. If you feel like you're de-energized, like you just can't get it together, that you're not focused, that you're not in it, you're not having any fun anymore, go back to PMC. It's typically going to be in one of those three areas. Purpose. Do you feel like you're contributing to something bigger on your team, within the organization? If you don't know what that is, ask. How is what I am doing contributing to something bigger? Bumps up the energy immediately. Movement. You guys, you get this freaked out look on your face because of that whole yoga thing. But I need it. Movement makes a difference. Whether it's taking your, your team outside, taking a walk, just standing up, just moving your shoulders back and lifting your head up and slapping a smile on your face. Movement creates energy. Scientists tell me this. It's not just me. And C is connection. What creates energy? The ability that you have to connect on a personal level. And that's what I'm all about. <coughs> so if you're low energy, take a look at your purpose, your movement, and your connection, and you'll be able to bump it up. Okay, now we're getting into the self-assessment tool. <coughs> Who here has done DISC? Okay, good. Good, good, good. So some of you, this part of this will be a review, and part of it, even after the review, you, you hopefully will be able to integrate it in a different way onto your team than you may have in the past. And for some of you, it will be new. DISC is about helping people understand themselves better, helping people know how to maximize what they do well, finding your unique gifts, and figuring out the gifts of other people, Successful people have a positive attitude. So even though DISC isn't about having a positive attitude, can I just tell you, I like to throw that in there. It's fun. And they know how to adapt to meet the needs of others. Who, when they hear the word adapt, has a negative connotation? You don't have to raise your hand. But think about it for a moment. People think of the word adapt 
as, well, why do I have to change? Why do I have to be the one to do something different? But the only thing we have control over is our thoughts, our feelings, and our responses. And so if you're trying to make someone else change, inside out. The only way to make change, to help someone else, to motivate them to change, or within a team, or within a company, or in the world, is to start from the inside out and understand that you're the one who needs to adapt. Okay, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. I'm going to ask you to do a few things. Are you ready? Yes. 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 Thank you. Three questions. The first question, are you more outgoing and direct, or more reserved and indirect? If you are more outgoing and direct, please stand up. Thank you. Now, don't worry. I've been told, I was like, oh, yeah, we're going to do this great exercise. We're going to run all around the room. And they're like, no, they don't have much room. And I'm like, okay. Can I have them stand up? Yes. Okay, good. So this is really as much movement as you're going to do, pretty much. All right. So the next question is only for the people standing. Do you feel that you're more competitive and directing or more talkative and interactive? Now it gets a little more difficult. If you feel that you're more competitive and directing, just stay standing like you are. If you feel you're more talkative and interactive, raise your hand, please. Great. Thank you. Now, it's literally one other question longer, so you can do it. You can keep your hand up. I know you can do it. Now, this next question is only for the people seated. Are you more accepting and doing or more assessing and thinking? Yes. <laughs> this is a forced response. Are you more accepting and doing or more assessing and thinking? If you answered more accepting and doing, raise your hand, seated people. More assessing and thinking, stay right where you are. Okay, now you need to do the last thing I told you to do for a moment so I can tell you who you are. The people that are just standing without their hands raised, D. If you are standing with your hand up in the air, even if it's here, I. If you are seated with your hand in the air, S. If you are seated and haven't done a darn thing, cease. And you'll understand why I didn't ask you guys to do anything in just a moment. <laughs> All right, does everybody know who they are? Yes? Everyone can sit, sit down. All right, who are my high Ds? Now, I know there were more than one. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, good, good, good. Do you, do you feel that you are leaders, maybe sometimes a little bit of a risk taker, love to take action, like to work independently. Does this seem to fit for you guys, your yes. Ds? Yes. Yes? Okay, good. That must be an I who's talking over there. <laughs> Eyes? <laughs> Raise your hand if you're an I. <laughs> Make sure that things are done right. Yep. 
Yes, is this accurate? Yes. 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 Good, good, good. Excellent. Now, um, just to let you know about how we adapt a little bit, I am a very natural high eye. I'm a people person. I love to present. This is who I am. Yes, my desk is messy. Uh, now, I am capable of adapting that style and toning it down, but because I'm in the role of a presenter, I embrace it. When I have been in sales situations, before I, I started my business 17 years ago, I didn't learn disc until 15 years ago. So I spent two years in a little bit, um, am I allowed to say hell here? No. <laughs> okay, in hell. Um, because I didn't realize why I wasn't connecting with people. When I came up here, and I started asking to do things, and I started going all crazy flailing and talking real loud. Some of you may have resonated with that, thinking, oh, good, we're going to have some energy. And others of you were really uncomfortable with me, right? To be honest, it's OK. I'm used to this now. Yes? A little bit uncomfortable with me? OK. That tends to be, more often than not, the high Cs. And when, before I learned the disc, when I was in a sales situation, I would go in and I'd be talking about how great my program is, and I'd walk out, and half the time I'd think, I'm thinking, oh, this is great, I'm totally going to get this sale, and I got it. And the other half the time I'm thinking, oh, this is great, I'm totally going to get this sale, and they wouldn't return my phone calls. They didn't like me anymore. <laughs> and I couldn't figure out why. And it's because I didn't understand the styles. And I was coming into every single appointment the exact same way. I was coming in all of my high eye essence. And the people that were maybe D's and I's, because I have a lot of D in me too, they were feeling like, OK, I got it. She's getting right to the, to the big picture. And what am I going to get at the end? The results. Let's hire her. But when I went in, I talked to high C's. And I'm just talking about big picture. This is great. Yes, you're going to love it. I'm like, uh-uh, no. Where are my graphs? Where are my testimonials? What, 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 how am I going to quantify this? And I didn't bring them any of that. But once I figured it out, once I learned about DISC, I figured out how to adapt my behavior. I'm still the same person. It's still the same program. But when I go in and I talk to a high C, I'm bringing the stuff. I'm bringing the graphs. I know that's what they need. So the point I'm trying to make is when we can adapt our behavior on a team, and like I said, you can use this at home, you'll be able to be more effective. So let's take a look at each, each of the styles and how we can work and what they bring to the table, first of all. Has anyone here seen Cheers? Oh, yeah. yeah? OK. Cheers is a great show to use as um, a comparison to pick out the characters because all of the characters on Cheers are stereotypes and so it's they're really obvious styles and so it's a way for us to not only understand who we are but be able to pick out the styles of the other people. So on Cheers, let's see, high D's we already discovered are leaders, dominant, um, they don't you know, they like results, but they don't like taking a lot of time. They might be um, wanting to focus on one thing while somebody's talking to them. Has that ever happened? You've gone in to talk to somebody, and they're looking at, yeah, I got it. I can hear you. Go ahead. Keep going. <laughs> that's, that's probably a high D. So who on Shears is a high D? Real dominant. Now, now, please, high Ds, don't take this as offensive, but it's a stereotype. Who's really like, she's going to tell you exactly what they think? Carla. Carla, right? Yes, high Ds, they don't pull any punches, and they want people to tell them exactly what they think. Okay, so who are high Ds again? Raise your hand, please. Awesome. Somebody, be brave enough to tell me how you contribute to the team. What do you bring to the table? Decisive. Decisiveness, awesome. Very important. What else? Sometimes I'm guessing you have some C in you. <laughs> no, D's can be very, very organized too, but um, it's, just so you know, I want to just take a step back and say that nobody is just one style. 
Otherwise, there would be four different people in the world. Right? So it's, it's how, this is an overview of what we did with these three questions. When you take the assessment, you know that you have to go through all these different questions. You know, you're like, yeah, it was a pain. Mm -hmm. So, but you get back 17 pages, you see the graph of, and how it relates. Like my, I have a high I, my D is really, really high. My C, I could actually literally dig a hole and put my C in it. It's so low. So it's really how it all ties together that makes the difference. Okay, so what other, what else? Look up here. When it comes to a team, is there anything that you think that the, the Ds are, are really good that they bring to the table? Leadership. Leadership. Definitely. Ds are great leaders and they know how to take action. All right, put your hands up again, Ds. Look around. Do you, if you guys work with any of these people, this is what they would like. They like for you to use brief, direct communication. They like for you to let them initiate. They like to focus on results, and they like to work independently. Is there anything else that you Ds would like to add? Just it's your, it's your turn, it's your chance to say, hey, this is what I need. No, so on D like. <laughs> Ds would be like, yeah, I need this right now, yesterday. No. <laughs> I love Ds, and I can say that because, like I said, my D is pretty high. All right, let's take a look at our eyes. Who on Cheers is a very personable person? Is what? Who? Oh? Woody. There's another one that's that's that yes, definitely Woody. But there's another big one too. Could be charming, sales real salesy, um, Sam. Sam. Yeah, total high eye, right? Um I high eyes. What do you think? you bring to the table? Cohesiveness. Eyes bring people together. Love it. What else? Vision. vision. Eyes are big vision people. Completely. One more. Cooperation. Yes. Cooperation. Okay, so you're seeing, D's are important, we need to take action. I's are important, we need to work together as a team. Good. Now, raise your hands high, eyes. Look at them. This is what they want. They like friendly interaction. And they need to verbalize their thoughts and feelings. If they're talking, it's the way that they process. They do like public recognition for accomplishments. Did I mention that I'm a high eye? Yes, you Thank you. Innovations, throw roses. Thank you, I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> the written details is not that they like to provide written details, they like to receive written details. Because if you have multiple things that you want a high eye to do, it's just easier for them to have it in a written format so they can go back and reference it. Does that make sense, high eyes? Is there anything else that you would like to add? These are my talkers? Jeez. Okay. Yeah. I will add that because I can do this. It took me a long time to not want everybody to love me. <laughs> and, I, and Nate, I'm just going to say this. I don't mean it like I'm, I'm exaggerating right now. But when I would speak to a large audience and most people could be sitting on the edge of their seat and, and clapping and, and making eye contact. But if there was somebody in the back that's like playing on their phone, doing this, I'd be like, why don't they like me? <laughs> so not all high eyes have this, but one attribute that sometimes high eyes have is that they like people to get along. They like to, to have that positive interaction. And sometimes they'll say, well, what can I do to make that person fit in or to, to help them to connect better with me? So just understand it's not always about you. High S's. Who are our high S's? High S's, they're the ones that are a little bit harder to pick out because they're not as out there as our D's and our I's, right? So, but the high S's are, are really important to the team. These tend to be people that are very steady, very stable. Um, they're going to work as a team. Um, like I said, loyal. 
who on Cheers would be a high S? Norm. 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 He likes to sit at the same seat, order the same beer at the same time each day. He likes that consistency. High S's are really important to a team because S's, what do you bring to the table? Consistency. Consistency, yeah. You can just look up here some of these things. Good. What else? Yeah, reliability. You need the people to, once those D's and I's get done brainstorming all the big ideas, you need to be able to have people actually be able to follow through and make it happen. That's really important from a high S standpoint. Sometimes high S's have been known to be resistant to change. You can be honest. Is this a little bit true? Yeah. So if you're working with a high S, one thing that you might want to do is, and you're going through a big change, Chunk it down. Like if you can say, okay, this, this change is going to happen now and it's going to contribute to something bigger, and then later on this change is going to happen and it's going to contribute to something bigger, as opposed to throwing everything at them, I think it's going to be a little bit easier. So raise your hand, ISs. Hi, please. Hi, hi. Thank you. Look at them. Communicate with them this way. Relaxed cooperation. They like the consistency and the stability. They like sincere appreciation. You don't necessarily have to throw roses at them, but a nice pat on the back or a written card isn't going to kill an ass. They really like that. They want to know that their contribution is important to the overall good. Right? Purpose. All right. Last one, all you high C's here. High C's, very analytical, very, um, well, let me let you pick out first on, on Cheers before we go into more details. Who on Cheers? Frazier, for sure, yes. There's another one that I like as, a, as an example, too. Who? Mm, he's more S-like. Yeah. <laughs>
people years ago. I would hire people that were just like me because I felt really comfortable with them in the appointment. And nothing got accomplished and the desk was still messy. So I realized after the, I admit it, fourth person, that that wasn't working. So then I, I specifically was looking for people that were highly organized. Pick out the things that I either didn't like to do or wasn't good at. Because as a, as a business owner who happens to be a speaker, high I, yeah, works as a speaker. High D, great as a business owner. What's going to happen if I have no C? I'm going to forget to pay bills. I'm going to forget to invoice people. It's going to get ugly. In order to be a viable business, I needed everything. So you need to be able to make sure you're picking and choosing the people that complement you. All right, so on your team, I know you don't always get the opportunity to pick and choose. But on your team, think right now, do you have all of the people that you need? And are you using the people that you have to the best opportunity for everybody? Are you using them and how they need to, how they, are you cultivating their strengths? Are you using their strengths? Think about it for a moment. And then I want you to come up with a not naming names scenario that you'd like assistance with and we'll talk through it together. You know what we'll do first? We're going to do it in small groups. Find three people. Three people we're going to talk about the team specifically and, ha and come up with questions on how we can make the team more effective using the qualities of DIS and S and C. And then we're going to bring it back. And you get three minutes to do this. It's not a lot of time. Find your teams of three or four if you need it. Go ahead. Thank you. That was very D of you. I love it. Different team members with different attributes. Are we using them to their For those of you who happen to have some high C in you that feel like you haven't been given up in instructions because I'm a high I, I just want to clarify for you that what we want you to do for the next three minutes is to talk amongst yourselves about what is most important in your team, what might be lacking, and how I can help you. So you might want to write it down, high C's, okay?
privilege of C's than I's. It's much easier to bring you guys back in. Thank you. I appreciate that. One of the groups that I worked with last week had a lot of I's and D's, and I swear it took me 10 minutes to get them to focus back up here again. So thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Did you come up with any specific challenges that you'd like assistance with? No, everything's smooth, everybody's getting along beautifully, your teams are highly productive, and yes, totally focused and ready. Good. Thank you. I don't know, is it better? Is that better? Oh yeah, that's better, thank you. Okay. happens in situations where you're putting teams together where you just are focusing on the task that needs to be done. Is there, I don't know, but is there a way to take a look on your team at what needs to be done and potentially redistribute any, any tasks according to what would work best for the skills of the people on that team? Is that possible? Yes, sometimes maybe? Sometimes. Yeah? Okay. And, I, and I'll tell you, it, it's not always possible. But whenever you can, if you can do that, what happens is not only does it make the person who is doing the job so much happier and more productive, it makes, brings the team together. I, I don't know if I told you to stop me if I did already, but I have one of my clients as a financial services um, company that was a division of a very, very large company and completely reorged the way, I know this wouldn't work here, don't worry, Rich, um, but they completely reorganized the way that they did their tasks to fit their styles and have grown their sales exponentially. Um, so on your team, there's a possibility of mildly redistributing some tasks. What else could you do? Have you guys ever experienced that? What did you do to great success? Anyone here ever experienced that? Where the, where the person has a task that they're supposed to do that's contributing to the team that is totally not in their forte? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's happened, right? So what do you do? As a project manager, I'm sure, I know that what you probably do is help coach and mentor them, right? How do you, you beat them? Because I know. Ah. Ah. <laughs> that's one way. <laughs> style because even though we each have um, some that are more dominant, some that are lower, we have the capability of doing any of them. This is a behavioral analysis. This is not a set in stone psychological profile. We can adapt and we can learn the different skills that may not come as naturally to us, but it would require us to understand them fully so that we can help cultivate them in other people. And yes, I kid around to make examples about how low my C is, but I gotta tell you, I would not still be in business after 17 years if I didn't learn ways to make it better, to do the follow-up with people, to be able to bring them what they need, to be able to file properly, and to be able to do what I have to do. We can adapt our behavior. And as either project managers or someone who just happens to be a leader on a team, whatever you call it, um, you can help people by using tools such as this to better understand yourselves, your strengths, and where you can adapt. Thank you for that. I appreciate you contributing. Who else? Yes? If your team is dominant and one personality type, how do you adapt the situation to see the benefits from all the other personalities? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, I like that. Although I'm not sure that you like that if you're on that team. <laughs> okay, you know what's really interesting? It really depends, too, on which of the styles. But that happens sometimes. And let's use it as an example. Let's say you have a team with a bunch of high Ds. 
what's going to happen now that we know a little bit more about our high Ds? Conflict. conflict. A lot of conflict. And because our high Ds know what they want, they want to take action on it, they're not afraid to voice their opinion, and God forbid somebody else has a different opinion, they're both going to go at it, and even though everybody wants to take action, they can't take action because they're too busy fighting about who's right. Okay? Now let's say you have a whole team of high I's. <laughs> How good they are. <laughs> much time socializing and either connecting or disconnecting if there's, you know, you can still be vocal about it but not necessarily agree with people, um, but not getting things done, right? And a whole group of high S's also probably wouldn't take action as much. Our high C's, what's going to happen with a group of high C's? Overanalyzation and not taking the steps to move forward. So that's why you really need, I'm going to come back, but Caitlin has an idea first. Oh, she's not giving me an idea. She's giving me a five-minute warning. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I got it. Okay, so what can you do in that situation? You can, um, most of the times, just simply bringing it to light is extremely helpful. And if you can't actually... Um, most people, if you've done the full assessment, understand not only what their dominant style is, but they have a secondary style. So if you can figure that out and use that information, so even though maybe a lot, let's use the D one as, as an example. So you have a lot of Ds on your team. If you take a look at it, you bring it to the forefront, you acknowledge that everyone's opinion is valuable, and then you take a look at the secondary style. Okay, you're a high D, you're a go-getter, you're going to risk taker, you're going to lead, you're going to take action, but you also have a high C that's really close to your high D. Let's put you in charge of making sure of qu the quality control for this, okay? And so you take a look at what are their next best strategies and strengths that we can use. And communication. Anytime there's a challenge, anytime there's a problem, bringing it out and communicating it to the group in a, in a format that is respectful and appreciative of the different opinions and uses everyone, embraces everyone's opinion because you know what happens? There is so much information and so much wisdom right out there, right? And we don't use it enough. And when we, we let go of ego and we say, I need your help. People, when they hear, I need your help, are really good about giving it. So ask, connect, appreciate, respect, take responsibility without judgment, and create a more cohesive, productive, profitable team. On a scale of one to five, where is your energy level? Are you one, almost asleep. Five, totally energized and ready to go. Raise your hand and put up your number, please. I love my measurement tool. We went up, we went up. I'm really, really happy about that. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? I apparently have three minutes left. Two and a half. Two.
Here it's hard because you're only looking at your dominant style. You're not really looking at some of the other areas that might be potential areas to bust up, but bring up. That's it? We're good? Good. Yay!